Now I want to introduce to you another congressman, one of his, uh, one of the colleagues of Congressman Forbes and uh, Congressman uh, Duffy. Uh, congressman Tim Hulskamp was elected to his second term now in the United States House of Representatives in just this last November. He represents Kansas's big first congressional district. I think it's the largest congressional district in the nation, nearly half of that state. He was born near and raised on, the family, on his family farm in Fowler, Kansas. There he learned the value of hard work and personal responsibility, a strong family life, and the essentials of his Catholic Christian faith. Congressman and Mrs. Hulskamp are the proud parents of four adopted children. He enjoys working in his church and remains involved as a lector and usher. He also continues to enjoy involvement in various civic associations, playing sports with his kids, and reading with his family. He is a courageous and conservative champion, Congressman Tim Hulskamp. Good morning. It's a pleasure to join you this morning. I just had a text from my wife, and uh, she's given me exactly everything I need to say. Uh, but uh, it's uh, tough at times, and I have been asked to give you a legislative update uh, of all the good things that are happening in Washington. It, it will be very short. Uh, but, but aside, I do uh, seriously do have one prayer request uh, for uh, whether it's serving with Randy and many of my other colleagues. It is a significant sacrifice uh, for, for our families. In a particular sacrifice I had last night as I was trying to do a nighttime tour uh, with some constituents from Kansas, I had to pull aside on FaceTime and, uh, and listen to my son's first solo at, uh, at a school event. And those are sacrifices that are made uh, by our family, so keep us in prayer. And, you know, we live in a, in a culture and a society that uh, obviously tries to downplay and actually tries to remove uh, God from our life. So it is particularly inspiring to me and I think all of us in encouraging that we are able to gather here today and pray for our nation and pray for its future because we do believe, the vast majority of Americans still believe that we have a God that watches over the affairs of men and women and he will bless and honor our actions here today. And uh, that came home yesterday, I had a, a meeting with a gentleman from a, a nation in Europe, I won't mention one, uh, which one it is, but he noted, you know, in our country, a long Christian tradition in our country for you to say God bless our country is, is not only considered strange it's considered offensive and he was just particularly inspired to see that uh, here so thankfully we still have that right and responsibility here in this country you know it's great to be from Kansas if you come into my congressional office uh, there'll be a number of pictures uh, about 25 to 30 of my family, but I also have one in particular. Of, I, I served in the state capitol on the second floor of the state capitol in Topeka, Kansas. You'll see a famous mural of a, a man that uh, wasn't looked on very kindly. And of a print of that, uh, and uh, it's a famous mural of a man who lived in Kansas for a very short time. His name was John Brown. And uh, he has a, uh, as you might recall, a Bible in his left hand, and he has a rifle in his right hand and he's towering over soldiers uh, from the from the north and the south and the huddled underneath are uh, many slaves and on the far left of the picture you see an approaching tornado of the civil war and please remember that imagery as, as i visit with you today and uh, and i'll tell you in, in terms of fiscal issues first of all let me address that uh, we face a crisis if i may so of biblical proportions and uh, our liberties, um, and I'll visit about those very shortly, are under threat as, as well. But uh, if you've seen, uh, watch any of the mainstream uh, media the last uh, month, uh, you would have thought Armageddon was going to hit, uh, the world was going to end. Uh, I think uh, we were going to poison our babies and, uh, and, uh, and also uh, dirty the water because we're going to cut a mere 1% out of the federal budget out of the growth. That's something called the sequester. Uh, Good things happened. Uh, the Republicans, we held firm, and actually we cut that out of the budget. It wasn't much, ladies and gentlemen, but that's the first time, I believe, the first time since a Kansan was in the White House, we actually cut federal spending. Dwight D. Eisenhower was in the White House the last time we had such significant reductions in spending. 
But we have a, a lot more to go, and uh, we have a continuing resolution under debate as we speak. We have a debt ceiling crisis. We have a debt crisis of uh, nearly $17 trillion. And as we move forward into that, let, let's remember that uh, $17 trillion amounts to over $50,000 for every man, woman, and child in America. And folks, that's unsustainable. But I'll tell you, there's one man in, in, in America that's very hopeful and does not, is not concerned at all about that type of debt. Uh, he came before a Republican conference er, earlier this week. That was the President of the United States. Don't worry. Uh, we're okay. He said it is dangerous. It is dangerous to think about balancing the budget. That is the case. One other issue I want to get on to, and, and this is something uh, uh, very close to our heart and, and, and for those of us here, and, and I, I mentioned coming from Kansas, uh, short-term home of John Brown. It's also the short-term home of a, of a daughter of an Ohio governor. Her name is Kathleen Sebelius. And uh, one thing that this administration is doing that is a tremendous threat to our history and our future is this HHS mandate. First of all, I want to thank the, the men and women across this country that have had the courage to stand up to the government and say, you know what, I disagree. And I refuse to bow to the altar of government and provide abortions and contraceptives and sterilizations and abortion drugs that are against my morals. <clears throat> Over two dozen lawsuits underway. It's working it up, uh, it's, it's way through the courts. And, and I'm thinking about that as that's happening. And this is a coercion. This is an attack on the first liberty of all liberties, of religious liberties. And I'm thinking, what would John Brown be doing now? Just think about that. What would John Brown be doing now? A few things I believe he would be doing. He'd obviously be with uh, the brave men and women that are taking these courts, these uh, lawsuits to court. He also would be on his knees in prayer as, as uh, we are today, but he would also be on his feet demanding action from Congress. And I'll tell you, the report today is there is no action from Congress. There is no attempts to protect our religious liberties. They won't allow those things to come to the vote. So we are waiting on, on action from the courts. And one other thing, and, uh, and I'll turn it back over, is, is the issue of marriage. And that's where we also see a deafening silence out of Congress. Defense of Marriage Act was a bipartisan bill passed by the House and Senate and signed by President Bill Clinton. I ask you to scour the newspapers. Look at what comments you've seen from my colleagues. You'll see very little defense of marriage. But at least uh, we are defending DOMA in the courts uh, with uh, uh, our leadership actually uh, putting up uh, uh, the money to make that happen. But please pray that and encourage leaders to speak up Speak up on issues of religious liberty. Speak up on the value of marriage and family. Speak up on that because just like John Brown, you can't sit down. We need to be on our knees, up our feet in action. And I want to thank you for your, your perseverance. One last thing. Uh, last night I was, was given by a tour. I went by uh, uh, the uh, door of the old Supreme Court chamber. One of the very last decisions from that court was a decision in 1857 that declared black men and women as property. That was one of the final decisions. And when that came down, the folks that believed that cheered. They had won forever. They'd made the decision, but not 10 years later because of John Brown and others. Every African American in this country was freed in less than a decade. Let's pray that the next decade will be similar in terms of protecting religious liberties and freedoms for all Americans. Thank you for having me here today.